In this video, we will go over everything you need to know about removing and installing the quill stem. Hi, Truman with Park Tool Company. Quill stems are found on many older bikes and some less expensive bikes. Quill stems are used in conjunction with threaded steer tubes. The stem is inserted into the steer tube and then the stem binder bolt draws up a wedge or cone in order to secure the stem tightly inside the steer tube. The other style of stem is a threadless stem, which clamps to the outside of the steer tube. See this video for more on threadless stems. Quill stems come in different steer tube and handlebar sizes. It is wise to measure your components to ensure that you are installing or ordering the correct stem. Here are the most common handlebar diameters. There are some outliers on some older bikes. Here are the most common quill diameters. Incompatible components can be a safety hazard, so always double check with the manufacturer for specifications and compatibility information. Stems also come in different stem lengths, measured from the center of the steer tube to the bar center. Stem angles, typically between 0 and 20 degrees, and quill length, measured from the bar center to the bottom of the stem. When making drastic changes to the angle or length of the stem, changes to the housing length may be required. On the other end of the stem, you will find the bar clamp. Many quill stems have a compression slot system to hold the bars. With this system, you will need to remove the controls from at least one side of the bar so that you can slide that side of the bar through the stem. Some other quill stems have a removable faceplate that will allow you to remove the bars without removing the controls from the bars. Typical tools for this procedure include appropriate hex or torx compatible wrenches, a hammer and a punch to unseat seized stems from the steer tube, a torque wrench or torque driver with appropriate bits, grease or thread locker for the bolts, and toe straps, zip ties, or something similar to secure the bars while the stem is removed. Before removing the bars, take some pictures for later reference when setting the bar roll and lever position. It can also be helpful to measure the bar angle. The method of removal will depend on how the bar is attached to the stem. If the stem has a removable faceplate, simply remove the faceplate bolts and the handlebar. At this point, the bars will be hanging free. It is good practice to use a toe strap or something similar to suspend the bars and keep the cable and housing from kinking. Next, loosen the stem binder bolt two revolutions and remove the stem. If the bolt is loose but the stem will not come out, strike the bolt using a mallet and punch. This will break the wedge free from the head tube. Many quill stems have a compression slot system to hold the bars. With this system, you will need to remove the bar tape and controls from at least one side of the bar so that you can slide the bar out through the stem. It's not a bad idea to remove the bar tape from both sides at this point. Loosen the compression slot bolt at least two full revolutions. Make sure the bars are loose in the stem. If the bars are binding or difficult to move in the stem, there are a few methods to open up the compression slot. Remove the compression slot bolt. Insert a tire lever, pry bar, or similar tool into the compression slot and use it as a lever, expanding the compression slot. Be very careful to not apply too much force. You can damage or destroy the stem if this is done too forcefully. Or thread the bolt in backwards and insert a penny or similar coin into the compression slot. The bolt will seat itself against the coin and push open the compression slot. This may not be possible with all stem designs. Once the bars are loose, loosen the stem binder bolt two revolutions and remove the stem. If the bolt is loose but the stem will not come out, strike the bolt using a mallet and a punch. This will break the wedge free from the head tube. Slide the bar out from the stem. 
you may need to roll the bar to clear the stem. It is essential to apply grease to the stem binder bolt, the wedge, along the quill, and inside the steer tube before installing the stem. For compression slotted stems, begin by threading the stem over the bar. Install the stem into the steer tube. Set the stem to the desired height, but do not exceed max height or minimum insertion. This is usually marked somewhere on the quill. Make sure this marking is inside the steer tube. Snug the stem binder bolt for now. Secure the handlebar in the stem. For compression slotted stems, center the bar, which you have already inserted. If necessary, open up the compression slot as you did during the removal process. Apply grease to the compression slot bolt and install it, but do not tighten fully. For stems with removable faceplates, apply grease or thread locker, not both, to the faceplate bolts. Place the faceplate over the front of the bars and thread in the bolts, but do not tighten them fully. These bolts should be tightened evenly and the gap between the stem and the faceplate should typically be even on the top and the bottom. This reduces stress on the bolt heads. Reattach all controls if they were removed during the removal process. Use the other side of the bars as a reference point. Torque all fasteners to manufacture specifications. Reinstall the grips or bar tape. See these videos for more information. Stand over the bike. Make sure the bar is centered in the stem. Next, loosen the stem binder bolt and straighten the handlebars. It can be helpful to use a ruler against the fork legs as a reference point. Set the bars to the desired amount of roll. Refer to the earlier pictures or measurements if desired. Torque the stem binder bolt and handlebar binder bolt to manufacture specifications. Thanks for watching. You can find hundreds more videos like this one on our channel here on YouTube. And we're constantly working on more. So be sure to subscribe for the latest content for Park Tool. And check out our website, which has even more content to help you make your bike better.